here. There's a steal. Dador Phillips to the rim, slams it home. From the slot, and Rickles hits it in overtime. Is back, the head up, the bounce, and he is spinning, spinning, and he stopped at the goal line. Centennial wins it. Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Sports Den, season two of episode of season tw 2020. Incredible. Uh, we're back. Uh, we are practicing a very socially distant episode for episode two, uh, as I'm riding solo this evening. But we still have a lot of fun and a lot of highlights to get to tonight. I'm Rick Palermo here on Sports Den. So um, we got soccer season coming up. It's here in August, and before the season started, we were able to sit down with the Blaine Bengals soccer team. Kenton Kipp interviewed head coach Aerosmith, virtually of course, and the captains of the Blaine Bengals soccer team. So without further ado, Blaine Bengals coach and captain. I'm looking for a lot better season this year. Um, our guys have matured a year, got bigger, stronger, faster. And so far, it looked pretty good. We have good players. Um, yeah, just have a good season, have a first good couple of games, get us out in front of people, and then uh, let's see where it takes us from there. Well, first of all, we want to get a lot more goals than we did last year, because that was one of our biggest problems, goal scoring. We want to be better defensively, because that was also another problem, letting too many goals in. We're really growing, and um, we're, we're getting a lot of chemistry going, make it to state, and just and have a, have a winning record, too. We started doing better towards the end of the year. Um, started stringing some things together, and we're just kind of building off that this year. Um, we lost one of our our leading scorers tore his ACL uh, in I think I believe it was February. Uh, Jack Moore. So we're missing a forward, but we have some guys that are hoping to jump into those spots and can help us out with some goal scoring this year. You know, I've been doing this since I was um, in Little Kickers and it's just really stuck with me. And I've just, I've really had just like a drive to get better at it. And um, I just really like the, the teamwork aspect. And um, I, I really like just, you know, working with guys and it's, it's a really just an uh, honor to be doing this. I think it's a special opportunity to lead the team, help the team as much as I can on and off the field. And it's nice to be able to watch the kids grow, the kids that came in last year, a lot of young kids, and to see them grow and see how they can do this year. Well, I mean, it's just hustle all the way around. These guys are probably one of the hardest working groups that I've got, had the opportunity to work with. I'm the goalie. Um, yeah, so in the back, a lot of people can't see the field like I can or the goalies can, so I gotta do a lot of talking, help people move where they need to go. If they can't see something, I just need to be very vocal and just help people move where they can't see. I play either as a center mid or a center back. <laughs> so if I'm playing as a center back, then I obviously my job is to help them with the defense, try to keep clean seats as much as we can. Then as a center mid, I like to distribute the ball, try and get it moving back and forth, side to side, all that. Seeing everybody grow from freshman year to now, is, it's an unreal experience of how people have just practiced on nonstop to get to where they are now and seeing them play now where they want to be. It's super cool to see that. I think our three captains for sure. Um, they've all been with us for a long time. Richie's been here for all four years. He was up as a freshman. I believe Melvin was as a sophomore on varsity. Um, and then Nick came as a junior, as a starter. So um, filled in some as a sophomore as well. It's just um, we, we have some uh, we have some new guys in the back, uh, younger guys that played on our ninth grade team last year, and now they're going to come up and have an opportunity to play. And uh, Alex Thorin, um, we have some new guys up front, um, Brian and Ay. Uh, they're going to add to our uh, scoring, we hope. And we have uh, Roman, uh, one of our outside mids, is actually here on time this year. Um, so he'll um, get a starting role, and I think that's going to help us right off the bat. We're going to win this year. Um, you know, I I really think that this is the year that Bengal soccer is going to do 
a lot better than it has in the past. Uh, you know, just like I said before, the, the chemistry is there and uh, the work, the work effort. And um, I, I really think that we're going to do all this here. It just seems like this is a group that truly likes each other. And it just seems like they love being around each other. So they're always happy and smiling and it's just a great group to be with. We're going to win this year. We need uh, some fans out here to come support us. Uh, be there when we win state. We have some guys who are really, really fast up, up front. And if they can put the ball in the net consistently, I think we're going to do very, very well. It'll be exciting to see this year. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> so we wish a good luck to the Bengal soccer program this year as they look to have another successful season. One season getting underway tonight from Centennial. The Cougars taking on Andover. We were there live. Let's get to the highlights. Season opener for the Centennial Cougars girls squad at home. They've only lost twice at home since 2016. Weren't looking to do it in the first half. Kaya Harper gets the free kick, knocks it all the way home. Harper, 20 plus goals a Metro season TV. ago. Dot com. And not only will you find that Cougars. information. Early in the second half, still one nothing. Lauren Aulis, the feed from Kaya Harper, makes it two nothing with just outside of 35 minutes to go. Not done yet in the first 25 minutes of the second half. Tatum Treadle from Sydney Cubes. Three nothing. Cougars continue to run away with it. Andover would get on the board with 13 and a half to go to try and get into it. Olivia Knopfley scores, weaving her way through traffic, but the Cougars would get the answer. Speaking of weaving, how about shooting it yourself, cleaning up the rebound? Kaya Harper in traffic scores to make it 4-1. She had seven multi-goal games last year, gets one the first time out in 2020 and leads the Cougars to a 4-1 win over Andover. As you look ahead at the schedules for girls soccer, up next for Centennial, they'll take on Maple Grove as that will be a key matchup that we will highlight here on North Metro TV. Then they'll be at home against Park Center before a long couple games on the road. Blaine, they've got trips to Andover and Elk River before they get to come home next Tuesday against Armstrong and in Spring Lake Park. They'll welcome in Osseo before traveling to Rogers next week. Centennial Cougars hosting their first soccer match of the 2020 campaign. They're taking on a familiar foe in the Andover Huskies. A team they beat to go to state last season. Now the Huskies, well, they found themselves in deficit early on. As Centennial's Ben Sproul got the scoring going early with a header off a controversial penalty call early in the first. And they would take that lead and double it after Will Myers split through the defense, drew a penalty in the box, and scored on a penalty kick. So, Cougars took a 2-0 lead into the half, and they would not look back. Zach Champoni, 18 minutes into the second half, scores a wonderful goal, a beautiful chip shot, put the Cougars up 3-0, and then the icing on the cake, Joey McMillan, the senior, not his first goal of the year, and the Cougars go on to win 4 nothing in their opening match over the Andover Huskies. All right, now as we take a look at the boys' soccer schedules, up next for Blaine, they will take this on this Andover team on the 2nd at 5 p.m. Up next for Centennial, they have Maple Grove. That's going to be a nice rematch, doubleheader there. We will be joining you for a live truck shoot there. And Spring Lake Park gets the action going at home against Osseo on the 2nd. Those are your boys' soccer schedules. And right, welcome back Inside the Den. I'm Rick Palermo, your host, practicing a very socially distant episode here for episode two. We've got a lot of sports to cover still here in this episode. Uh, there's some fall action going on. We just took care of soccer last segment. And now let's get into our girls' tennis schedule. So you see Blaine, Centennial, and Spring Lake Park all getting the action started on the first of the month. September 1st, Blaine will be at Totino Grace, Centennial at Armstrong, Spring Lake Park taking on Anoka. But then week two, or game two, Blaine and Centennial, rivalry week begins. It will be at Blaine in their brand new tennis facility, so that will definitely be one you do not 
want to miss. And then Blaine taking on Spring Lake Park later on next week on September 10th. More action going on here as we continue girls swimming and diving schedule. Centennial getting things started this week on the 1st against Armstrong. Spring Lake Park and Blaine will have to wait until the 3rd of the month to have their first meeting. And again, um, swimming and diving meets, as we mentioned earlier on Sports Den. The meets happen separately in their own pools and everyone records it and times it and then there's a virtual comparison of the times and scores. So we're practicing socially distant swimming and diving for all our high school swimming and diving events. Moving on to cross country, Blaine Bangles took on uh, Centennial and Champlin Park last weekend at 9 a.m. Boys were at 10.30 at Northwoods Park. Next week, the Cougars getting things going on the 4th versus Osseo Girls at Centennial High School. That will be their most recent event coming up. And for Spring Lake Park, on the 11th is their next meet. So be sure to check that out. Posted all their scores online. You can check that out at the new mshsl.org website. Brand new updated. So. Our coverage of high school sports continues this year in this unprecedented fall season. We've got a lot of ways to watch. We'll be covering events live this fall, just as we did tonight. We had a one cam event for the Centennial soccer match. And uh, if you weren't able to watch that, you can view everything online. We uh, will show you how to view that. If you have us on television, if you're in the area, Comcast channel 859. But if you're not in the area and still would like to support your high school teams. You can go to NorthMetroTV.com where all our live events will be streaming. Also on Facebook as well. But if you're not a Facebook user, which we all know Facebook isn't for everyone, we have live coverage on YouTube. We've got two channels in case we get two games going on. So search us, North Metro TV at YouTube, and then we have the Sports Plus channel as well. And you can visit NorthMetroTV.com for a complete list of our schedules and games. Uh, so we got the website, you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, we've got uh, all our live events streaming there this year, which we're really excited about, uh, you know, and we're just happy to have sports back on television, so uh, we can't wait to cover all these events this year. Uh, th this week coming up, we got a doubleheader, Maple Grove at Centennial, and we got some girls tennis, rivalry week, Blaine and Centennial at Blaine's brand new facility, that's at 355, we'll be live, then more girls tennis later next week, Spring Lake Park at Blaine, and another soccer doubleheader. We love soccer coming next week. Centennial at Spring Lake Park should be a good one. Those Centennial girls, very good. You don't want to miss it. Well, that'll wrap up our coverage here on Sports Den. You can visit us at NorthMetroTV.com, on Twitter, on Facebook, at NorthMetroTV. I'm your host, Rick Palermo. Thanks for joining us tonight on this Monday evening, Sports Den, episode two, done. <laughs>